Uh, I'm joined by Star Wars enthusiast and film director Jesse O'Brien, whose film Arrowhead recently won Best Feature Film at the Sci-Fi Film Festival in Sydney. Made your own film Arrowhead uh, out in the desert. Did you feel like you were channeling George Lucas in any way? You know, he was out there in the desert at my age doing Star Wars and of course you can't avoid comparing yourself to that in a sense, at least as far as the experience goes, because there's so much that's been written about the making of that movie and how grueling it was. He actually had a nervous breakdown on the set and I think that's a big part of why he didn't direct the next two. Uh, I didn't quite have a nervous breakdown. I loved every minute of it. Good, good. <laughs> but yeah, you can't not think of what it might have been like back then. I, I'm very fascinated by sort of early Spielberg, Lucas Law because they were such good friends making films together. To me, that's, that would have been the best time to be making movies. You don't know me. You don't know anything about me. I'm looking at you now, Kai, and your eyes, they're different. So tell me a little bit about the storyline of uh, Arrowhead. What's it about? It's about a guy named Kai who's a, who's a mercenary who becomes stranded on a desert moon. And the only person with him is his computer named Reef, who becomes a sort of floating robot yes. who can walk around the desert with him. While he's there, he gets a um, sort of symbiotic infection with a life form on the moon which transforms him every so often. So he's got to deal with having to transform in a werewolf type scenario while figuring out a way to get off the moon. So you've got werewolf, moon, droids. There's a few different kind of references <laughs> going on there. Yeah. Did you base the computer, and I love the way this like little droid floats too. It looks like a computer that I had as a teenager or as a child. Did you base that off or were inspired by any other droids or robots? No, but I think there was there was a big attempt to make a robot that could become iconic. If audiences latch on to Arrowhead, that'd be great. And we always wanted to have a robot that people could sit, like have, if they had an action figure of him, sit him comfortably beside R2-D2 and, and Johnny Five and all the other sort of famous movie robots. You did this? Sometimes you have to break something to make it better. Yes, that makes sense. When I was watching the film, I, I thought actually, you know, this this strange looking computer droid robot thing sounds a lot like Sean McAuliffe. Oh, you and didn't then after, afterwards I checked, I was like, it is Sean McAuliffe, yeah. wow. I'd be happy to answer that. Let's log in. What brought his uh, your sort of attention to the role? Uh, someone I knew, knew someone who works with him. So he, he passed it along and Sean said, yeah, I'd love to do it, just talk to my agent. So uh, the producer, Christian Delessi and I went and had a coffee with Sean, uh, talked to him about the project. He was very supportive of the fact that we were, you know, young filmmakers who haven't done it before, just trying to, you know, put our stamp on the, on the film world. And he was really great about the whole thing. So you originally made this film as a short film and then adapted it into a, a feature film. How did you go about that process of adapting the, the short into the feature format? Well, the, the feature was written first. The script had been finished. And I didn't know what to do with it. So I thought the best way to do it was just make a short film as a sample of what's in the, in the feature. So if you look at the short now, it does have a lot of the same elements. And to be honest, I think it's the best thing I ever did because it's so much easier to show somebody what you want to do rather than just speak about it. And that's what I think a lot of people should do instead of just wanting to make features. And they, they could dream their whole lives about wanting to do it. But, or they could just go out and make something. Screen Australia isn't known for funding a lot of science fiction films and you went off and, and uh, got funding elsewhere. Can you tell us a little bit about how you did that? Yeah, we actually tried to crowdfund this film for $40,000 and we only reached half of our goal so we, we didn't get anything. And it's not like $40,000 is very much for a science fiction film either. No, we ended up doing it for 180000 and that was so hard to do. That's such a, a tiny amount of money to make a feature. What the, the crowdfunding campaign did do was it generated people's interest in, in the property and uh, TV1, who was a, a Foxtel channel, they contacted us and said they want to they um, commission something local. And they said, they like my short film, we'd like to help you fund it. And I said, yes, please. <laughs> I'm not getting off this planet. It's not a planet, it's a moon. But we aren't the only ones still here. Oh, wait.